Welcome to this video. My name is Phil and I am a senior lecturer in astrophysics at the University of Lincoln. And in this video, I wanted to go through the derivation for orbital velocity when the orbit is actually circular. So it's not quite the same if it's an elliptical orbit. But in this video, we're going to have a look at how we get that orbital velocity if the orbit is circular. Now, for a circular orbit, it will be constant that orbital velocity does not change during the orbit. It will be going the same velocity all the way around. It just obviously changes direction. And in this setup here, your orbital velocity is perpendicular to the gravitational acceleration, which would be towards the larger object. The example I've given here is Earth orbiting the sun. Now in this setup here, for a circular orbit as well, your centripetal force is going to be provided by your gravitational attractive force of the object that it orbits. So in this case here, it will be provided by the sun. So the centripetal force required for an object to remain on a circular orbit can be given as this below here. That's going to equal the mass of the smaller object. So in this case here, it will be Earth times the velocity squared and then divided by the orbital radius r or the semi-major axis which is the same thing for a circular orbit. Now we can actually equate that to the gravitational attractive force so we've got the central petal force which is then equal to the gravitational attractive force down here. Now what we can start to do is then rearrange that for v to get our orbital velocity. So what we're going to do, well, the smaller m, the lowercase m, is the mass of Earth, where the uppercase m is the mass of the Sun. We've got that on both sides, so we can actually divide by m and remove that out. Then what we can do, if we multiply by r, we can remove it from one side on the left-hand side, but we can also remove the square on the other side, so it just becomes over r as opposed to over r squared. Now once we've done that we can then take the square root of both sides and we then end up with the orbital velocity for a circular orbit. That's going to be equal the square root of g m over r where g is the gravitational constant, m is then the mass of the larger object that it's actually orbiting. In the case I gave here that would be the sun. And then that's going to be over r, which is the orbital radius or the semi-major axis. Now, if you know the orbital period and the orbital radius, then you can also get the orbital velocity because you know the actual circumference of the, of the circle, which is the top part, the 2 pi r. And you then also would know the orbital period. So it's basically going to be the distance traveled divided by the time. And you can also get the orbital velocity that way. So it depends what information you have of the orbit and the setup, really. But there's two ways you can then get that orbital velocity. So thank you for watching. And if you enjoy, then do check out some of the other videos.